Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning, my name is Massimo Banzi. I'm the founder of this project and company called Arduino. And I will give you a quick overview of some of the things people are doing with this, uh, this platform and why it exists. So one of the things I like to start with is to show this particular example of an everyday situation where somebody had a cat and this cat was sick and another cat that was like healthy. And the idea is how do I automatically give the right food to the right cat when I'm not at home? So I guess he quickly searched the internet and couldn't really find a solution. So he put together this device that you see in the picture, which is essentially a cardboard box that uses a CD reader from an old computer to create a door that kind of slides open and closed. And there's a chip in the, in the cat's collar that detects, that the, the box uses to detect the right cat and then opens, and then there's another little sensor, so a small electronic component uh, on the door that makes sure that the door doesn't close and chokes the cat. So this little device, you now there's a video you can find online, there's even a, a tutorial that you can use to build this thing. It's a small electronic device which solves a practical problem that somebody built in a few hours using this small computer that I helped create a few years ago. And, and this is just one of thousands and thousands of projects that we, start to, that we have been seeing appear on the web in the last... Uh, we started working on this project 10 years ago. So this little computer the size of a credit card is essentially becoming the motherboard that powers a lot of these innovative ideas built by everyday people. Because I guess the work that we try to do with this product here is that we were trying to help everyday people, people with no background in electronics or software, to be able to create using technology. And it started off because, you know, along with this group of friends, and um, I'll introduce you to them in a second, we were involved in this design school that was in the northwest of Italy, and our students are interaction designers, so they design the new the new ideas that become products years after. Finally, um, Genevieve was actually reminding me that yesterday there was, a, there was like an internet-connected toothbrush that was sort of gamifying the, the whole process of brushing your teeth. And I remember a student of mine, Harald, who made this project eight years ago, and we actually told him it wasn't that such great an idea. So it was interesting how, you know, the students of interaction design are experimenting with a lot of concepts that might sort of pop up years later as, as, as products. So... With all these friends, we had this issue of trying to figure out how to make technology easier to use. So this is the design school where we met in the northwest of Italy, which obviously doesn't exist anymore because these kind of you know, projects in Italy tend to die very quickly as soon as you do something quite relevant, they can get rid of you. And, um, but the idea, yes, you know, is, is something that might change the status quo is always very sort of, you know, not a good idea in Italy. So the idea here is that we tried to make something that could be used by children, and effectively children started to use this. So this is Sylvia, she has, an, she has a show on YouTube, but she teaches other kids how to build things with this Arduino computer. She has these little kind of LEDs made out of cardboard that kind of talk to each other, and resistors that kind of help the LED not blow up and stuff like that. So, and, but there's a lot of other examples of kids from all over the world who are actually building stuff with this, with this tool. Oops. And, and this is a picture of, of the back of one of these Arduino boards. This is a, something that costs around 26 euros, more or less, as a sort of... And you can learn most of what you need in order to operate this little computer and build things from looking at the internet and all the documentation. But we took one step forward when we designed this. We decided that we would release the whole plan for these circuits online as an open source project. So on top of doing open source software that we are very familiar with, with Linux and all this other kind of software, we decided to open source also the hardware to create this idea that you could build upon hardware the same you build upon software and you build upon a lot of other types of you know, creative endeavors. And, and this was actually very positive because a lot of people sort of started to extend, modify, make their own versions. We released this software that you can use to kind of program this thing. So you write the software on your laptop using this application and then you download it into the small computer and it runs on it. 
And some people, you know, from the technology community took this thing not very, not very nicely. So one guy said that Arduino is baby talk programming for pothead. Because the idea is that if you are doing some kind of design or art project, you're clearly on drugs. This is, and anything that it's not incredibly complicated, it's obviously designed for kids. So there is this issue in the technology community. If you're designing something for kids, you can make it simple. If you're trying to design something which is for for adults, it has to be complicated, otherwise it's not real technology. But also what I think is great about the Arduino is this great community that wraps Arduino around and kind of shares knowledge, help each other. So, and so quickly, we released everything as open source. We, we use Creative Commons, which normally is used for texts, books, or music, and applied it to hardware, and into the documentation, and then software. The only thing is protected, it's, it's the brand, so we decide who uses the Arduino brand. So Arduino is really the mashup of a bunch of open source technologies, and we basically provide a seamless experience on top of a comp lot of complex stuff to use. So some examples, this is people making their own boards in Chile by hand. This is people making their own variation of, of the Arduino board. This is collaborating, so we collaborated with Intel and they made this Art Galileo board, which is compatible with Arduino and we launched it uh, with the CEO back in, back in October. Um, there's also a, a huge community of these modules that we call Shields. So when you want to build an application, chances are that you can find a module that you can plug on top of your Arduino and build what you want to build. So in this case, there's probably about 400, 500 of these shields doing all sorts of things. This morning I realized somebody made a shield for creating your own radar. And you know, something that was like military technology 20 years ago, now you can buy on eBay for 10 euros. And also we changed the way we learn things. So magazine like Make, websites like Instructables, which is now owned by Autodesk, where people share all sorts of knowledge. So the way you learn about this stuff is changing dramatically. You don't learn it in school, you learn it by yourself, online with your computer, using the community. So again, things that start as a joke, like you know, I, I'm gonna build like a little helicopter with four propellers as a, as a, as a, as a toy becomes something that people use to imagine how to help villages in Africa, or it's used for, for, you know, for very technical purposes, for making music. Another area which uh, was mentioned before, a wearable, there is this specific Arduino that you can sew into fabric called Lilypad, and people have built, you know, with this kind of Arduino type technology, a glove that interprets sign language and turns that into words that are spoken by the device. Or this artist actually made a whole synthesizer out of fabric. So the, the connections that you see are made of special thread, which is also conductive. And so this thing is a synthesizer. You plug it in, you turn the knobs, you press the keys, and you make music. And this is another um, Imogen Heap. It's a British uh, singer. She built, with the help of some people, this glove that allows her to control the performance while she's singing. But she put all the information online so that people could build upon her work. Uh, for example, we, the people have used Arduino to create controllers for people who are less able. So creating uh, specific devices is very important. People who are less able are not all the same, so you need a, a high degree of customization in that area. Obviously, the Internet of Things was mentioned. This is a project from 2006. It's, it's an, kind of an Arduino-compatible device that you plug into a plant, and it gives a, a, a kind of a voice on Twitter to that plant. So the plant tweets and says, you know, it's, it's kind of dark in here. It'd be good if somebody could switch on the light or something. So in a way, it shows that people have been experimenting with this for quite a long time. This is another project from a friend of mine who made this collar that tracks the position of lions in, in Africa. So in a way, it allows people to study the behavior of lions, but also to tell the people in a village, go collect your animals unless the, you want the lion to eat them. So again, sensors on the body, kind of tweeting whenever the kid inside the kind of mom is kicking. Um, Again, there was a kid that made this uh, internet-connected earthquake alert, which he hooked up on, tweet, on Twitter and has like millions of followers. This is Chile. He was 13 when he did the project. Uh, people tracking project, like a clock that tracks the position of people uh, through Twitter. 
This is quite interesting and important. During the Fukushima disaster, sort of what happened afterwards, uh, people were in, 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 in Japan were not really comfortable with the data the government was giving about the actual amount of radiation. So they started to build this Geiger counter that are connected to the internet. And they actually were able to make a hundred of them and send them out and then plug them to, the, to this platform. So they were able to actually visualize the actual amounts and to demonstrate that the amount of radiation was actually a lot more than the government was saying. So we will also work with kids here in Spain, this group called Complubot. They make robots and they compete in this thing called RoboCup. And we made a ro the Arduino robot was made collaborating with them. They started off when they were probably 12 or 13. And then when we worked with them on the robot, they were 17. So this is another project for one of my students who is now a successful Kickstarter. It's a robot that's used to teach children how to program by plugging these little color bits. And then the, the color bits represents different part of a program and it tells the little cubic robot how to move around in space. So also Google used Arduino technology to build some of their tools. And another pro project that we talked about a number of times is that people sometimes make prototypes with Arduino to get a rough idea of what they want to build. And then they develop the idea further until it becomes a product. So in this case, this particular product was prototype with Arduino, and then it became a very successful Kickstarter, which made a lot of money. Obviously, this is like several iterations later of the idea. But in a way, we saw that there is this trend of people now taking the rough prototypes, the things they built in sort of half an hour or two hours at home to solve a specific problem, and then they find there is a value about it, and they sort of iterate on the idea. And then after a few iterations, these products become something that you can actually build a company around and start selling. And so I argue that the next innovation, yes, is going to come from great engineers and great scientists working in a, in a company, but the next great idea will probably come from the bus driver. The, or like yesterday, I, was, I got on a taxi here in Barcelona, true story. The taxi driver turns around and said, wait a second, are you the guy from Arduino? I was like, uh, yes. Oh my God, and he pulls out the Arduino book from the dashboard, and he was like showing me that he was watching one of my tutorial videos on YouTube on his phone while he was waiting to pick, pick me up. So he was like, <laughs> he was making photos, videos, he was tweeting, calling people on the radio. So, you know, if the taxi driver in Barcelona is learning about Arduino while he's like waiting for a customer, I think that this guy or, 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 or a woman uh, like him can create some great new product or idea very, very soon. So I'm very excited about this idea that we can make tools that empower everyday people to become creator of technology and not just consumers that just buy the next tablet and can you know, pay to watch whatever movie somebody decides that you can buy from that device. But they can create new devices, new paradigms, new ideas. Thank you.